So yesterday we had the release of Linux Lite 5.6. Now in the past I've praised Linux Lite on this channel for being one of the better lightweight Linux distributions for people who are new to Linux. Uh, and that primarily had to do with their very extensive, very well written guides that are built into the system, as well as the overall familiarity and cleanness of their XFCE desktop environment. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is covering some of the new things in 5.6, as well as doing a quick overview of the Linux distribution. And first, we're just going to do a quick run through of some of the highlights of the release notes before we go ahead and actually jump onto our system. And the very first thing you're going to notice when you first boot into it is that you can install Linux Lite directly from the welcome dialog. There's going to be a big old install now button, so that is welcome. Additionally, they've updated their icon theme, so you'll notice a cleaner icons, maybe a couple new icons. Uh, they've added some different wallpapers, but I believe there are four new wallpapers. Ooh, four of which are from one of their in-house artists, so that is cool. Their uh, Light Tweaks application is now going to have Brave web browser support, so that is nice. A lot of people use Brave. And within the Light Tweaks, they've added the ability to edit the Grub menu to display the correct naming entry, which of course is Linux Lite. Additionally, they've upgraded a couple different packages. The default Python version is now going to be Python version 3, and the distribution is going to be featuring the 5.4 kernel, Firefox 91, Thunderbird 78, Libre, Office 6.4.7.2, and we have VLC, GIMP, and the base system is going to be based off of Ubuntu 20, well, 20.04.3. And with that, there are a couple of known issues with this update. I'll go ahead and leave them right down below. And with that said, let's go ahead and jump onto our system, run through a quick install, and check out some of the Linux Lite specific applications. So now we are here on the live ISO. But one thing I forgot to mention is the system requirements. It's Linux Lite, so it can run on pretty old hardware and it can run fairly well. Uh, the minimum requirements is a 1 gigahertz processor with 768 megabytes of RAM. You need at least 8 gigabyte hard drive. And the preferred specifications is a 1.5 gigahertz processor with at least a gigabyte of RAM and a 20 gigabyte hard drive. Uh, me, I gave it double. So this system, this live ISO that I'm currently running, has a whole 2 gigabytes of RAM and a 20 gigabyte hard drive. So here it is, this is the Linux Lite welcome screen. We're not really gonna play with the system now, but we can see what it gives us from the start. You have updates, drivers, restore point, all that. Um, it's kind of weird they include this in the live ISO because you're not really gonna want to do a lot of this stuff from here. So let's just go ahead and click install now and wait for this to go ahead and fire up. All right, so here we are. Let's go ahead and run through this. Uh, by the way, for VirtualBox, for those of you who want to go ahead and try this out, the uh, default resolution is 16 by 9, but it's the lowest one. It's like the 1300 16 by 9 resolution. And there's no 1080p and there's no pre installed VirtualBox drivers. So that's just a quick note for those of you who like to try out distros in VirtualBox. So let's go ahead and select our keyboard layout. This is going to be typical of most Linux installation screens. And you saw we had a little update thing there. Here we have options to download updates and install third party drivers. Let's go ahead and do both of those. So continue. And then from here, we're just going to go ahead and erase the entire disk, install Linux. So let's hit install now and continue. So now while the installation process has started, we could go ahead and select some of our personal uh, things, such as our geolocation or our time zone. And here we're going to set up our name. So my name is Brandon. Computer name, we're just going to call this Linux Lite. There we go. Type in our password and require password to log in continue and that should be everything we need to do. Yep. So now it's just copying the files. All we're going to do is wait for this to go ahead and finish up. If you want to see exactly what it's doing, go and just click this little arrow and you can see the actual console there of specifically what the installer is doing. All right. The installation process is complete. Now, to be honest, that was one of the uh, longer installation processes that I personally tried out. But we're going to go ahead and restart our system and boot into our new Linux Lite installation. All right, here is our login screen. It's fairly pretty looking. Uh, the resolution's a little screwed because of uh, VirtualBox, but 
that is to be expected. So there's still no 1080p, so I'm probably gonna have to install the uh, VirtualBox drivers, but before we do, let's check out this screen now that we're actually in our system. They make it really easy from the get-go to go ahead and do some of the basic things you'd expect. So for example, if I go ahead and click Install Drivers, you can see it just basically scrolls us down this list of getting started with the Linux Lite. So it says the first thing you'll wanna do is install updates, install drivers, set a restore point to back up your system. Basic things that a lot of people might not think of to do right once you boot into Linux for the first time. So for example, if I just hit Install Updates, it's gonna ask for our password and then it's gonna go ahead and automatically do that for us. So here's a list of our updates. We just hit update now and it's gonna go ahead and take care of everything for us. And then when it's done, we can see here Linux Lite updates. Would you like to see a log? For now, I'm gonna say no. You can see right here, it also gives us notes. You can also uh, install updates via the menu, menu, favorites, install updates. And then we can install drivers. So if I go ahead and open this up, you can see it's gonna open up the software updates additional drivers in here. You can see for me, it's giving us a couple different options. I have the VMware driver that I could go ahead and use. Additionally, we have the VirtualBox guest service drivers here. And if you're somebody who is using like a NVIDIA card, for example, you should have an option within this menu to go ahead and select the proper drivers. So what I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and install some VirtualBox drivers so we can uh, not be so zoomed into everything. All right, now we got some 1080p action going on here. So what we're gonna do real quick is close this out and let's run into our terminal. Now the first thing I noticed when I was installing the VirtualBox drivers is they have a wonderful little bash RC script here. If they are running bash, let's give it a check. Let's see if they have NeoFetch installed. They do not, so being that this is Ubuntu, just a simple sudo apt install NeoFetch will do the trick. There we go. So jumping into NeoFetch, we can see they have a nice little feather for that Linux Lite logo. They are running Bash, so that is a Bash RC script to go ahead and get this nice little uh, themed look in the terminal. And we are running the 5.4 kernel with XFCE, and you can see all the theming information, things like that. Right here, uh, on a clean boot, we are using 564 megabytes of RAM. So that's uh, fairly low, but pretty typical for a base XFCE installation. This is a little bit prettier than base, so it's cool that they kept it near those levels. If I go ahead and close it out, you can see the overall look of the system. If we go into the menu here, it's kind of a lighter theme, but they do include search, categories, and all that. So even though they're using XFCE, they've really managed to make it uh, keep kind of a modern look with the modern functionality. If we uh, go ahead, let's open up our task manager here so we can see exactly what's going on on our system. We have 188 processes. Right now it's using 31% of our two gigabytes of memory. That's not too bad at all with pretty low CPU utilization anywhere between zero and 5%. You can see all the tasks running, just basic XFCE stuff, a lot of VirtualBox driver stuff. So if I didn't have those VM drivers, it probably would even be using a little bit less system resources. So let's go ahead and close this out here. And one thing I mentioned in the beginning of this video is the guides for Linux Lite are very nice. You can see this help manual right here on the desktop. It does go ahead and open this up in Firefox, but their actual integration and how they have this laid out is phenomenal. So if I go ahead and pull this down, you can see this is the Linux Lite help manual. You have a easy context, so you could go ahead and start here. It's gonna take you through your system, everything that we've kind of already mentioned, some keyboard shortcuts, and then you could go ahead and just go down the list. So we have the installation, we already did that, but it gives you more detailed things, such as doing an OEM install, drives and partitioning. If we go under network, it shows you how to set that up. If we go back over to home, you could see different software, updates, network, uh, graphics drivers. So if I click video, it's gonna go over all the information you're gonna to need to know to figure out what graphics card you have and what drivers you need, how to actually install them and everything. The help manual in Linux Lite is by far something other Linux distributions should look at and take. So if we go ahead and close this out, we can open up the control panel right here on our desktop and then that's gonna take us to all of our settings. Here you're gonna get just about everything from appearance, desktop, file manager, under system, we have our light software, light sound, so some uh, distribution specific things. For example, light tweaks, this is something we mentioned. Basically, it's gonna give us a list of tasks that we could go ahead and perform. So you have your boot up fix, clear memory, uh, you could clear your Firefox cache. 
So this is kind of like a little C cleaner utility to go ahead and clean up your system. You can select these, hit begin, and it's gonna run through that. And we have other things such as the light software, light sounds, if we open up a light desktop, for example, it's gonna give us options for our desktop uh, icons. If I go under light software and give this a quick password, it's gonna ask us if we want to go ahead and update our software sources. Sure. And then it's going to ask us to select the task. For example, let's go ahead and install some software. And here it's going to bring up a list of very popular software that you might want to go ahead and install on your system. So we could go ahead and click one. For example, let's do just audacity, hit install. Yes. And then it's going to go ahead and grab that package for you. So that's a nice little tool that makes grabbing some uh, popular software and packages fairly easy. And the installation was complete. And we're not gonna run through absolutely everything in here. They have the user manager, the light welcome. So if I click that, this is gonna open up again. Uh, here we have the option to select a light or dark theme actually. So uh, if I go ahead and open up our file manager, you can see what that looks like. And this is our start menu. So let's see if that will change both of those real quick. Let's select dark theme, dark theme applied, and it applied on our start menu as well. So that is much nicer in my opinion. So let's close all this out. Additionally, you have your display manager settings, accessibility stuff. You can enable auto login, get some more information on your system, even though it won't let me because I'm in a VM. And you have a lot of stuff overall. If I go into appearance, you have your styles, icons, fonts, everything. Overall, this is a very well-rounded XFCE system. If I go to an open up menu, we can see some of the pre-installed applications. So if I go under accessories, for example, we can see we have archive manager backups, calculator, fonts, screenshot, text editors. We have GIMP installed by default, document scanner, paint, photo manager. Uh, Firefox is the default uh, web browser partnered up with Thunderbird. Under multimedia, they have VLC installed out of the gate and I wish it was MPV, but that's all up to preference. Volume control, CD burner, we just installed Audacity. And under Office, they have some of the Libre Office applications, and then System is gonna be general system stuff. So we have our Process Viewer, HTOP printers, uh, partition managers, package updates. Uh, they have Time Shift installed, which is nice, and that's integrated with that welcome screen to create the uh, system restore points. If I open up this Process Viewer, you can see it's just HTOP. We're using 606 megabytes of RAM at this point after opening and closing a couple things. So really not much added to the system after it's been on for just a little bit. But overall, that is Linux Lite. It is a wonderful Linux distribution that I would highly recommend you check out, especially if you have older hardware and you want something that's very lightweight, but obviously comes with a lot of nice tools that make the experience a lot easier, but not really too much a blow and unnecessary garbage that's going to wear down or hold your system down from how it could be performing. With all that said, there'll be a link in the description if you're interested in downloading this and trying it out. I would like to thank Mitchell Valentino, Kyle, Phil, Mac, and Timo, Anthony. Thank you guys so much for being some of the higher tier Patreon and YouTube members. I do appreciate your support. And thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you could click the join button down below to get emojis and things like that. But if you prefer Patreon, you could go ahead and do that as well. Speaking of supporting the channel, we have some Tux stickers if you're interested. These are also available on other things, but I'm still trying to work out uh, what looks good and not. But if you are wanting a Tux sticker with this kind of geometric design that I had made, you could go ahead and purchase this through our spring store. The sticker overall is pretty good quality. You can put it on a car and it should be fine. Things like that. Stick it on the back of your laptop too. Flex your Linux pride. Um, other than that, I hope you all have an absolutely beautiful day and good.